have a special place where you write, where you create? I have an office um, that I rarely write in. <laughs> my office is for revising. I thought it would be my, I've set it up to be my special spot for writing. It's really not. I usually write on whatever the most comfortable piece of furniture we have at the time is, and I, I curl up in a ball like I'm a little kid reading a book, and that's where I write. I wrote Libby on a shared computer, though, in a boarding house that I lived in. There were six people, nine cats, six dogs, and one computer. And I always was looking over my shoulder because the computer was in the middle of the house and there were five roommates behind me. So um, I, I've learned to write anywhere, but my favorite is just to curl up somewhere private with my back against a wall or a piece of furniture and write. Do you use a computer? I do. <coughs> the computer you were living on was held together by it was, at one point, it, right? it was. I, well, when I started writing Libby, I was on the shared computer at the boarding house, and then uh, the landlady's daughter got tired of me always having the computer because I was a, a big computer hog that month. So she sold me a laptop that had a broken screen, and I got on eBay, bought a screen, watched a YouTube tutorial on her computer, and replaced the screen. Then I dropped it. And um, <laughs> actually, it was the dog that's in my second book who knocked it off the desk. And I had painter's tape. That was all I had in the house. So I, I painter's taped it together to finish the book and the revisions. But it actually held up really well for a very long time. I did finally buy a new computer. <laughs> obvious answer in that because I want to. <laughs> Why do you write? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, because I, I think I was raised to, I, I think I owe that to my mother. She read to us constantly and she, she writes children's books. She wrote constantly and read us her writing. We got to see her process of writing. So I kind of grew up just assuming that that was what people did just as easily as reading. And, and I think she just raised us in a very writing sort of life. Honestly, too, your family is all very creative. I mean, her sister, who I'm very good friends with, is an amazing writer. Amazing writer. And your dad makes furniture and all kinds and of crazy Fox stuff. And also, Fox, he, he yeah. gets into different projects and makes all sorts of things. And then my, our older sister um, writes songs and takes photographs. So, yeah. okay. You have a question? Um, yeah, I don't know if you answered it earlier. Um, I wrote a extremely short story <laughs> with only two characters and it's probably only like two or three paragraphs. How do you suggest that um, I blow that up into something bigger than just a two paragraph extremely short story? For me, that's, that's a really tall order because I write long in everything just automatically. Um, I, am, I am a complete failure at short stories. I can't keep anything short I am, I, because I like to describe I will describe for pages before I make something happen. Um, so I guess I guess my advice for what it's worth would be to describe, to, to go in through their eyes and describe the things that they're seeing, smelling, touching. But um, but I'm probably not the best person to answer that question because I don't have a starting point on that. I, I'm not a very good short story writer at all. Well, and there is a thing called flash fiction. You know, where, yeah. where, you know if there are some pieces of fiction that are only a page long. And that don't need to be linked yeah. that, are, that are perfect the way they are. Do you think that's a process? We're saying that you, you write, you write, you write, you describe a lot before anything happens. Do you think that's a process before you actually, for you, before you can actually get to something? It is. I think because I usually write in fast drafting. If it's not November and I'm not doing the National Novel Writing Month, I still that's still how I write. I think um, my descriptions are a stalling tactic because I don't know what's going to happen yet, and I, I won't let myself stop writing, so I just describe things to pieces before, and eventually I get bored with describing things and then something has to start happening. So I, I do, I think it's a, a way to stall without stopping, because if I stop, I won't start again. It's just a way to keep going until I get where I want to go. Do you have a problem um, I, I, yes. <laughs> um, I, I really, um, I mean, I, I consider myself a competent writer no matter what I'm writing, but I don't have a lot of fun with anything but fiction. Although I think the basic, I think, it, I think the, the basic idea of keep writing and something will eventually happen and then you can make it good from there applies to no matter, no matter what kind of writing you're doing. Okay, well, if there are no other questions,
questions, then we'll go ahead and stop the Q&A session. If any of you want to have your book signed by Sarah, if you have a copy, or if you want to stop by and talk to her, ask her questions, she'll be here for a few more minutes. What's that? Um, oh, and, and her copies of Livy of Unlift Here are on sale at the bookstore, according to Sean. Will we have some tonight, or did the other bookstore get up? Uh, yes, the bookstore's coming to solve. Okay, tonight at the uh, Mayo Review Open Mic Night, which will be on this floor in room 203, Sarah will be reading part of her novel, a chapter, and these will be on sale at that time in the theater, if you want to come back to that at 7.30. And if you have something you would like to read, of course, uh, everyone is welcome to read Open Mic Night. Yeah, we like Open Mic Night. We love Open Mic Night.